Today's project's going to be a little different one. Um, if you've read the caption, prior, you know what it is, but it's not going to be a standard one. We're going to do something a little different, and <clears throat> I'm not going to give it away until the end. So. <clears throat> This stuff is and we should be using all of it and I'm just gonna jump right into it I originally started building one and it was too small, that's why I went with this bigger box. So let's try to fit a lot of stuff into it. And that's really all we're going to be doing with this for now. We'll set that aside till we add in our LEDs. Next we're going to work on the DB9 connector. This I've actually cut from a, a cord of a the CN2 um, tape cartridges for, for Commodore. It had the uh, six wires I needed and the colors almost match the Atari pinout colors. The only one's different is that we got more of a red color on the CN2 wire instead of like an orangish color but basically the same thing. Um, this um, grommet here I got this was left over from the other CN or DBN db9 connectors that I used to uh, restore my repair 
my TAC-2 controller. That's it's like my second video, I think. Second or third. You go back, check that out. But I had some leftover grommets, and this one actually fit this one, so I'll be using it in, in here when we go to connect this into the, the box. I could have probably just bypassed the wire and in installed this in the box, but it would create more uh, cutting, drilling, trying to size this in, and it'd be just more stuff packed on the inside, and that was the problem I ran into with the first one I did. It was a smaller box, and by the time I got all the wires and the, the other circuit board in there, it was just, I couldn't get everything in it, so that's why I want to go with a bigger box, and I'll make a pigtail for the for the joystick connector plus it's less strain when you when you uh, have your joystick cord and you're trying to plug it in it's just too much on the box so you're better off just having a cable you can plug in and out of well that's the way I figure it so <laughs> Okay, well we got the uh, DB9 connector. I think maybe we'll put that in the casing then. Um, that's our thing. It also comes with these um, in case you're using for a PC. They'll they come through the the case to screw into the back. It's, I'm not going to be using those, so we'll just set those aside. Um, let's see. It's in here. clips there okay so it does just fit right like that I'm gonna need my strain relief that's gonna go right there we think about the strain relief one screw goes one way and then other screw goes the other way, which is kind of, I can see the way it's made, it's all, this piece is the same as this piece, it's just flipped around, but it makes it difficult for installing. Let's see if that's about right, because I can still move it. Go right about there. Let's tighten down this one side. I'll just pull it out and tighten down the other side. Still slides, I guess we do.
blocking half the shot. He can't see anything. Bad looking, and this is gonna go down towards the box. But you can tell the cords yellowed and old. It came off of a parts CN2. I probably could test the continuity of these just to make sure. way to do this. <laughs> I don't think there is an easy way to do this. Alright. Oh, white was one. There should be one. Blue was two. I gotta tin these tips yet. We have green for three. Okay, brown was four. Okay, red was six. And black should be eight. Six, seven, eight. Should be right. And on to the next. Okay, marked out some holes. That's where I'm going to have the uh, power come in. That's where I'm going to have the power switch. That's where I'm going to have the power LED. And I just got to drill them out so I can get the wired through so I can do the wiring on the inside. Here's a quick mock-up, just did a test fit, got the uh, hole drilled for the, the DB9 connector, power light, power switch, power cable, so I'll have to uh, do the wiring on the inside, I think that's just going to take too long if I record it, I'll just come back and show you when it's done.
Well, while testing, I found two mistakes. I had a bridged contact on my L4, and I had my DC input in the wrong spot. So I had to switch that and change those around. Now it's working well. Um, as a brief uh, preview, you can see what when I hit the fire button, they go in consecutive order. And all the directionals work. Now I've got to print my picture, drill my holes, and install all the LEDs inside the box. That's what I'm going to do now. Okay, and here it is. Final product. Had a couple mistakes on it. Scratched it here and some of the gloss came off when I was trying to hold the, the grommets in while I pushed the bulbs in, but I'm pretty happy with it being my first uh, joystick tester. Well, completed joystick tester. So, I guess I'll give you guys a quick uh, demonstration of it. 5-volt. Um, uh, you can plug this in USB or a wall wart. Uh, obviously a joystick. And turn it on. And off. On. And up, down, left right circles and the fire button I almost hear Picard saying fire photon torpedoes well, this is a fun little uh, project and uh, I'm sure somebody could have probably came up with a better design with a circuit board, but eh, I had fun making it. And you see in here why I needed such a big box to get all the wires in there. Thanks for watching.